Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about how I passed the professional engineering exam uh, when I only had a month to study for it. Uh, so I passed the exam that I took in October of 2019. Uh, I just uh, got word that I passed it uh, about two weeks ago. I was, I was really happy I passed it. I, I was confident I passed it, uh, but a lot of people are still surprised that I, I only spent a month studying for it. Uh, so I just wanted to explain what happened, why I had to do that, and how it worked out for me. If you're watching this video, uh, I'm guessing you're probably an engineer. So if you only have a month to study for your exam, uh, you should stick around and, and watch this. Let me just give a quick rundown of what the PE exam is. The PE exam is the professional engineering exam. It allows engineers to get certified to stamp drawings and basically it allows you to have the license to practice engineering officially. It's a big uh, name recognition thing uh, and you also get a, a pretty good pay raise along with it once you get your PE license. I'm just gonna explain exactly how this happened, uh, how I did it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this if you have the time, just spend four to six months studying for the exam. But if you have to, if you have to take the exam uh, in a month, just stick around and I'll explain all of it. I'm an energy engineer uh, and most of my work revolves around, well, a lot of it re revolves around uh, HVAC and refrigeration uh, engineering because I have to deal with efficiency of heating and cooling equipment and control systems. Uh, so most of my work revolves around HVAC equipment. So it was natural for me to take the HVAC and refrigeration exam. Uh, so make sure whatever exam you're taking, it's relevant to uh, what you practice. Uh, you don't want to take some, you don't want to take civil engineering if you're, if you're a, I mean, if you're like me, if you're an energy engineer, you wouldn't want to take the civil engineering exam. So make sure you get all that straightened out. The HVAC and refrigeration exam is one of the easier exams. Uh, I know that the fire protection exam can be pretty difficult as well as the uh, electrical uh, power distribution or power systems engineering exam is pretty difficult. Uh, but still, all these exams are pretty tough. They're a lot tougher than the fundamentals of engineering exam. So most prep, test prep services or anyone you talk to, any professional engineers, tell you to get plenty of time to study for this exam. Four to six months is recommended. However, due to some uh, work and personal situations, I was unable to give myself that amount of time. So I originally registered, I, I, I got the ball rolling on the process of registering for this exam in early 2019. Uh, and this is really, this is really the annoying part. It's really cumbersome. Uh, there's a lot of, you have to get these uh, recommendations, you have to get transcripts mailed in and it all has to be sealed and like officially notarized and all that. So that was, that was, in my opinion, the most difficult part of getting the PE. Just getting all this bureaucratic stuff out of the way so I could finally register was, was the cumbersome part of getting my, my license. So it was May of 2019 when I finally got all this stuff done and I was, I was ready to register for October, but then I realized I, don't, I, I couldn't register because um, I was missing something. And uh, so that was a bummer. I couldn't register for October, uh, but I still finished everything else. And I was, I was like, all right, I guess I'll just have to take it spring of 2020. And then along rolls September, and then I realized that I can register to take the exam in October. And uh, September was a time when uh, a lot of things were changing for me. I was starting a new job. <sighs> I was moving to a new city. I was moving to New York uh, from Atlanta. So I realized that oh, this is gonna be tough. I have a month to study and I'm in the middle of moving and starting a new job but I just decided, you know, what the hell, let's just do it. I have a month to study. If I don't pass, I can, uh, I can just pay a little bit more money to retake it again later in spring. Uh, so I just said, uh, you know, let's go for it. So the first thing I did was I ordered 
the engineering pro guides exam prep materials i think it was forty dollars but i ended up buying all the other supplements uh, that they provide um, so it ended up being a hundred dollars maybe uh, by the way uh, this is just an endorsement i'm not they didn't pay me any money for this uh, i just i really like their study guides so uh, they worked for me. Uh, so I, I got all these materials and I started studying. I got, I got them uh, on September 11th of 2019. So I had about six weeks to study. And I started using these, these guides and, and working through practice problems and understanding everything about the exam. But I realized that most of the studying was, uh, I wasn't really studying like I needed to be studying. So it didn't really count mostly just background. I, I realized that I needed to buy all these supplement books, just reference materials that I needed for the exam. So I ordered all these books. There's four books. Uh, these are specific for, most of these are specific for the HVAC and refrigeration exam. Uh, engineering unit conversions, uh, the ASHRAE handbook 2017, uh, HVAC equations, data, and rules of thumb, and then mechanical engineering reference manual. Uh, so I ordered these four books on Amazon, got them rush delivered to my apartment. They cost $500. I was not happy about that, but once I got all these books, then the real studying actually happened. Uh, I spent about 20 hours a week studying for the exam for the three and a half weeks I had left. I skimmed through the books. I, uh, I skimmed through the books as I was completing the practice problems. Uh, I annotated the books with sticky notes to indicate where certain charts were and certain reference materials and formulas were in the books. And I completed all the, the practice materials that I needed to in Engineering Pro Guides. And then I brought all these books to the exam. I brought my three ring binder with all my materials in it to the exam. Uh, basically everything I was using to study. And, uh, I was able to confidently pass the exam. Um, and I, I was pretty confident before that as well. But uh, yeah, I, I felt pretty good about it. And the great thing is because I ordered those books, four books, less than a month before the exam, I was able to return them all after the exam. So I got my $500 back. Uh, and then I got my results in mid-December and I passed and uh, so yeah if you if you just have a month to pass the exam consider doing this it's actually uh, pretty cheap because you can return the books if you just have a month to study you can just return them after after the end of the month so yeah if you uh, have any uh, comments or grievances about how I dealt with the PE exam, uh, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Am I reckless for only giving myself a month to study? Let me know uh, if, I mean, it's a little reckless, but I think people can surprise themselves. And I think uh, you, you can surprise yourself. If you have the drive, you can surprise yourself in a short amount of time.